today will be sort of a short session. Um, it's sort of a continuation of this, uh, my last presentation where I did stuff on talking about making modules um, on JHPCE, but today we'll be focused on more of like, so that it's sort of a lot of a learning curve to, um, to learn how to make modules that everyone can use. So today I was gonna do sort of an alternative um, like what other options do you have besides making a module for everyone? If you just want to share software with a small number of people, what options do you have? Stuff like that. Um, so a lot of the stuff from the last presentation will still apply, but today we'll mostly talk, talk about, um, I'll focus more on what I think are common for people here, which is like um, specifically R and Python based software. Um, and um, yeah, so we'll mostly be do interactively showing what to do. Um, in general, I'd say you have a number of options uh, and I'll go through all of these, but um, starting from like the, the easiest to the hardest, but probably most helpful for people is um, first you can just, you, you can load the Python module. If you're, if we're talking about Python, you can load, we do have a Python module and then you can just install packages just for yourself. So that's that's the simplest. Um, there's also conda environments, which I'll get into. So you can create conda environments just for yourself, or um, you can also create them to a specific path. So that gives you an option to share the path with people. And even better, you can do that using by making the environment into a module. Um, so uh, yeah, mostly talking about more documentation on LMOD, which is like how the module piece of things is here. And um, Conda, um, I haven't really introduced Conda, but the general um, idea behind Conda is, um, I guess it was designed for Python, but really you can use it for, it's just a general tool for um, creating what are called Conda environments, which specify a certain set of software. Uh, and the, the idea is that um, in particular for Python, it's not too simple to um, basically, in a lot of cases, you'll have to uh, install different versions of Python and different sets of packages for different um, projects or different things you're working on. Um, and it's not trivial to just completely reinstall Python or you want to have flexibility in which um, sort of isolate different projects from each other. In, um, so that you can just have the set of software that each one needs. So those are called con environments. And, um, without going too deep into that, I'll mostly just be um, showing how to use them. But um, so we can just get started with the demo piece of things. Um, let me make this a little bigger. Um, so first, I guess uh, I was just gonna show um, in terms of Python, well, maybe I should talk about R first. So I think um, as most people know, like um, for R, we actually just have a Conda based module for R, for Conda R. Um, and so um, it's kind of weird that we treat R and Python differently, but in, in general, I think we need more flexibility with the Python versions that are needed. So um, that's why for R, we'll just typically load one of the modules and, uh, well, really this is this is equivalent to loading Conda R here. So if we if we see what modules are available for um, Python, um, I mean, we can just use the default, for example. So if you wanted to install, to set up Python, a Python package for yourself or Python, um, some Python-based software, you can load the existing module um, and then you would do something like, uh, I'll give it give a concrete example here. So um, let's say I'm interested in this tool called um, cell to location and I read about it and then I learn that it's a Python based tool. Um, so it turns out when in the ins installation, they do recommend installing with Conda, which makes sense. But the simplest way to do to, if we just wanted to get this <laughs> working and didn't want to make kind of environment. I mean, I, I recommend that you would, but um, if you're just trying to install it as a package, you could um, do this. Um, 
and um, I'm just going to explicitly say user. So um, the module, like, an ordinary users are not able to install Python packages to the the location where the module is located. So like this users this dash dash user is not technically necessary, but I do it just to make it clear that um, we are just doing it for ourselves. Um, so this would be like how you would, if you just really quickly wanted to try to get something working for yourself, um, this is what you would do. Um, and so that's, I think that's the simplest option, but um, so next I, I would say we should try the, the recommended approach. Um, so I'm going to go back to another example. Um, another example of a software uh, that I've had to install, um, but this is just another Python based tool called Simui. Um, and um, again, if you just read it, like if you learn a bit about it, you can see that it's also um, recommended to install with Conda. Um, so I guess I haven't mentioned with Conda environments, there's some, a common pattern where um, you can specify basically what software is involved in the environment with this environment.yml file. Um, in this case, typically, um, I think it's just like sort of a strong invention for people to provide this as part of their software when they're sharing it. Um, but uh, so typically that'll include something like a Python version, um, some system dependencies, um, and then actually here, this is a bit confusing because we're mixing Python packages with system dependencies, but in any case, this is, um, You'll see something like this for um, to, spe to specify what the environment looks like. Um, in terms of installing it, um, you would do something like this. So um, let's go back to uh, things I actually don't really want to install. <laughs> so this is just for examples. So I'm just gonna quit. Um, so. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a directory. Um, I'll explain why in a second, but um, um, so I'm just going to uh, make something called uh, wait, and change directories to that. Um, so we're going to install this what, the way I would consider it to be the proper way. Um, which is what we recommended here. Um, so actually, when you specify dash n, that um, that gives that says make an environment called Simui, and actually, what's implied here is that you're making it just for your own user. Um, so that's, I mean, that's great. It, it helps you isolate projects for yourself, but um, today we'll be talking about more of like how to share. So an alternative to using this dash n and just giving a name and making it for yourself is um, you can use the dash p argument and that gives it a, uh, builds the environment to a specific path. Um, and with the idea that I think that usually we can share those paths um, to make it, um, so you can share that with collaborators or whatever. So um, I forget if it requires a full path. I'm just going to give it the current working directory, and then like I'll call it like Simui in environment. Um, and we're still using this dash f to build it based on this file that's um, I haven't downloaded yet. So I need to <laughs> see that. Um, that's why it says git clone here, and I just ignored that. Um, so let's do it. All right, now let's continue with uh, what I was going to do. Uh, let's make sure this is good. Um, or you know what? So this is inside the...
Yeah, I'll, I'll create it at this level. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but. Um, and instead of here, it's actually inside the repo, so I'm going to change it to this. Um, and then. Um, the, the, oh, I forgot to mention that there's a. Conda is, is software itself, so you, there, there's a module for Conda as well. Um, so that's how you use it on the cluster. Um, let's see what happened here. Um, Paramount dot. Oh, okay. I've re I reversed the command accidentally. So I meant to do. Um, um, this. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, this usually does. The thing about Conda is it's can be pretty slow. Um, there is an alternative to like a what's called like a drop-in replacement for Conda called Mamba. Um, which speeds things up, um, but I'm not going to be doing that today. Uh, I think it's a good option, though, just to mention it. Um, so this will take a bit. Um, I'm going to show a different example um, while this loads, because Conda is very slow. That's one big problem with it. Um, let's just open up another section, and we're going to install something simpler. So. Um, as an example of like a Python, a very stereotypical Python-based tool, like where Conda helps um, you create your own isolated environment. Um, another, a, sort of a different tool, which is just like a tool that gets compiled to just a binary, um, is I'll be using. Um, actually, this is the link. Uh, salmon is an example. So salmon's for transcript quantification, but. Um, this is a tool where um, they provide it. This is another common pattern. Um, they provide it as um, either a pre-compiled binary or just the source files that you can build yourself. Um, today, I'm just going to be using the, um, I think this here should be the pre-compiled binary. Um, so we'll do this as another example. Um, OK, so I just made. Let me remind myself of what I just did. So we created this um, shared software folder. And let's um, just to keep this organized. We'll um, do this. Um, OK, so we're going to uh, install Salmon as another example. Um, so this is comes as a like a tarball that's gzipped, which means we just uh, use this tar command to, with the um, like the Z argument here that unzips it. But um, so so we can just get an ordinary um, directory basically instead of this compressed version. Um, so if I remember correctly, this should have a um, Oh, this is the source version. Um, so I didn't really want to spend the time to. Um, let's see. So normally they have the. Um, I'm going to go back to a previous example. So. I guess here it was the. Okay, I'm sorry for the confusion. We'll um we'll do it from this version because I know this was the um this is not the same font. Just one second. All right, we're we're just gonna install a different version because uh, I don't want to actually spend the time to build the thing first. So um with simplicity, we're just going to restart this.
<laughs> this is just something I do when I'm impatient. And I don't want to wait for something. I just thought for the command. But, um, um, okay, so this should be the, the um, Okay, cool. So this this does have in the this directory this should be the binary that should just run. So we're I'm gonna test that real quick. Um I did it too. Um and I don't know if it I have to make it executable first, but okay, cool. So the binary is working. Um I'm just gonna check on this real quick to make sure I didn't uh, uh, uh this is still going, sorry. Um okay, so um so for we're gonna start to show how to do this to make a module for yourself rather than making one just that gets shared for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um so um we're going to make a basic Lua file that specifies how to make this into a module. Um, for that, I'm going to, okay, up. Um, uh, you can really put the directory anywhere. I'm just thinking what I should do to make it more, most clear here. Um, So, okay, I'm <laughs> going back and forth. We'll make a directory called like Lua files. Um, um, and then here, let's make a, um, okay, let's, we're gonna make um, a Lua file that loads the salmon tool. Um, so um, this was version 1.2.1. 1. So the convention with these is that you write the version number um, and then dot Lua. So, um, oh, you know what? I'm giving bad advice again. Let's make a, since we're, we're gonna plan to have multiple software tools, um, we should put them in separate directories um, to make it clear. So now inside of here, I'll do what I just said. Um, okay, so um, let me make sure I get this right. So let me just check something real quick. Um, so I have already done this as an official module, that's what I'm checking here, but I'm ah, okay, so for pen pad. So, um this is sort of the simplest case where if you want to just add a software tool to the path, that's sort of like the most basic way to load software. Um, in the Lua file, you would just um, use this command called prepend path. Um, and then it can take multiple different path variables to specify, uh, make sure I get this right. Yeah. Um, that you mean the, the path environment variable. Um, and then we are, um, this would you want to add where we put the salmon file to the path? So um, that was. Um, let me make sure I get the path here. Um, uh, okay. So for salmon. I think it was this. Um, so as a okay, I'm just going to um, build this up.
So let me make sure I got, so I sort of copy and paste that from two different places. Let me make sure I actually like got that correct. Okay. Um, yeah, so we would just add that directory to the path so that um, when you type in the word salmon, it knows that you mean um, this particular file. Um, so this would be the very simplest way you can write a Lua file. Um, there's other options, but for simplicity, I'll just leave it at that for today. Um, and um, so the next thing you would do is once you have a Lua file, you um, if you want to use modules yourself, you can you give the path, you have to specify like for Elma to look in a particular directory for the Lua files. So that will be um, this. Um, so what I'm gonna do just for now um, is uh, I have my dot bashrc file here. So something, if you wanted to share modules just with um, like some collaborators, but you didn't want to make it into a full module, you could have sort of a shared, you could tell basically your collaborators that just add a line to their bashrc that says um, module use. Um, also, it's important just to clarify that for today, I'm presenting doing something in my home directory, but that would not be, you would want to have this be a path that you could actually share with other people and set the permissions appropriately. Um, so you would definitely not put it in your home directory, but this is just something to involve presenting. Um, so you could add a line like this um, and actually take out the salmon part. So um, you would just do um, that and you could save that and then um, oh, so maybe yeah. Different difference between uh, module load and module use. Uh, yeah, good question. Um, so module load says to like load a particular module. Module use says to like look in this particular particular directory to see what modules exist. Um, mm -hmm. So right now I'm saying like look under this path, and right now I'm um, basically that's. Um, so it's, it's looking right here and seeing that like um, salmon 1.2.1 exists as a module. Uh, so after that, I need to declare module load. Yeah, so it's yeah. not going to load by uh, if you just do module use. Yeah. So, so with module use, I'm just saying I'm going to use the module, but I'm still need to load the module. Module use says like these modules exist, I guess, yeah. and this is where. Um, where you where they exist and then module load says I actually want to load it. Yeah. Oh. Um, so um check on this again. Ah, it takes so long. Mm -hmm. Um okay, in any case we can um I'm gonna log out and show that this should work. So normally um like in my last presentation, which is a while ago, so I'm gonna go back to the slides, I would um I recommend like stuff about permissions. So this is something I didn't do because I was in my home directory and I'm not actually sharing it, but normally you would want to, if you're sharing this um, path with, with others, you should do something like, we use 775, which is pretty like loose permissions, but um, as long as people, whoever you're collaborating with can read the and it, like execute the directories that are, um, it's looking, you're good. So I would just say 775. Um, and I, I would also recommend, we haven't done, built the content environment as a module, but uh, as I would recommend 555 for that, just to basically remove write permissions so people don't accidentally change an environment. If you want to just keep things static and re as reproducible as possible, that's, I think, the best. Um, okay, so let's log out and log back in so we can get the Bash RC uh, working. Um, Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to basically when you use the module use command, it sets this environment variable called a uh, module path, and then it it puts whatever you put in the, the top. So by default at JHPCE, these you get these other paths for modules, um, but this is just showing that it actually is looking in mine. And if we wanted to prove that this works, I'm just going to um, 
So there's already a salmon module. So that um, to avoid confusion, I'm actually just going to to show that what I did actually worked. I'm going to um, set it only to my <laughs> home directory. Um, and so if I did like um, if I were just looking for ordinary modules um, like Python, which I had just shown was available, it should not work because I just removed the the path for the other modules. In any case, I, I was doing this to show that you can actually do module load. Um, it should work. So right now, um, if I just do salmon, um, now the salmon software is available. And that's because we just um, loaded it. We said to prepend this path. Um, and that's where we installed salmon locally. So that's like an example of setting up a module for yourself. And um, as I mentioned, like to share that you would, um, one idea is you could have your collaborators just put this, stick this in their batch RC, and then um, you can add as much software as you want to um, following this pattern. Um, Um, okay. uh, I'll show, so even though this is not quite done, I'll show how to do the, we'll also make a Lua file for the, um, the conda environment. So, um, um, okay. So we're in Lua files. Um, we'll do the name of the software, which was similarly. Um, and, um, they actually, I don't remember what the version is, but, um, you would do, let me just check if I can get that real quick. If not, we can just ignore it for now. This, uh, this is, um, this is like the latest git commit, I guess. Um, which is, uh, we could just call it this version. Normally you'd actually um, clone like this or download this version instead of cloning, but um, we'll just call it this for now. Um, so we could do like, a, um, <laughs> that's such a long version number. Uh, Um, um, sorry, this is, this is supposed to be the dot Lua file, not the, not a directory. Um, yeah. um so we're just going to make this, uh, um, let me make sure I get the syntax of this right. So this is also something we've made as a, a module. Um, so I'm just going to um, uh, remind myself how I did this. Make sure I get the syntax right. I think it's just execute, but, but um, um, yeah, okay. So I think the, um, We do something like, I'll explain these commands in a second, but um, so to load it in the con environment, I think the ba most basic thing you can do is, um, so load the conda module, right? Cause we need that to, to use conda. Um, and then with Lua, you can also specify like, there's this execute command, which just runs a system command. Um, so we can literally just make that conda activate, which is how you would normally activate your conda environment. Um, so here we just we have to get the path right. So that would be um, earlier we put that in um, heat this as the path. Or sorry, this is I just click this. Um, we want to get this path. Um, 
and we, we say run that command when the module loads. There's also an option to like run commands when the module unloads. So there's a module unload command, and like normally you should do that because um, you want to be able to. You don't want to have the module like permanently do things to your like you want to be able to exit like on environment. So that's that's like a best practice kind of thing. Um, so this could be just like a simple version that that does this. Um, so we're gonna save that and uh, okay, yeah, Conda's extremely slow. Um, I should have probably predicted that this was not gonna finish. Um, but yeah, I mean, if if we wanted to um, to load this the same way, we would. I mean, it's it's not built yet, so it's probably gonna say. Oh, I uh, I removed the uh, the other path, so it's, it's not finding the. So we try this again. Um, it should claim to be using to activate this con environment, which is not yet built. But normally, that that would give you, like, if you ran Python, I don't know what's going to happen. It's probably going to. Okay, um, <laughs> you'd have the version of Python associated with that con environment. You'd be able to um, import or whatever packages that were built alongside that tool uh, specified in that environment. .yml file. Um, so I think those are two common cases, just um, sort of binaries and um, Python-based tools. Um, and yeah, I know that was sort of like I was moving through multiple windows and different files and stuff. And if anything's unclear, <laughs> I can uh, verify. But um, that was most of what I have for today, actually. Um, Yeah, so I aimed for that to be more approachable than building a, a full module, but I feel like maybe I covered almost as much stuff. So from here, I understand it works. Um, so it, in theory, it all everything I've done here could be done with R, but we just happen to have, um, so we have Casper who maintains the Conda R module, which basically is a Conda environment with R in it. Um, and I feel like in practice, it seems like most R packages that we use just work with the versions of R we use. I don't know why, I think that's mostly a coincidence. I think with Python tools, it seems like, I don't know, in my experience, for, for whatever reason, um, they're more picky about which Python version you use. And so it's just simpler to build everything from scratch in a con environment. It seems to just work with R, but yeah, in theory, there shouldn't be any difference between R and Python um, with how you manage software. Um, uh, I'm in the past, I was oh, uh, building the Python environments with Python ends instead oh, yeah. of with con apps. Yep. So the do you pick up these Honda ends for a particular reason? Or? Yeah, so I prefer them to, I, I guess, and that's a good question. I didn't mention Python virtual environments. I, um, so those, if I remember correctly, are associated with a particular version of Python, mm -hmm. right? Like a particular Python installation. So for that reason, I consider them less flexible because you have like, you have to use a particular version of Python. And, um, it does sort of the same thing, but with Conda, you can say, I actually want Python 3.10 or 3.7 or. I think that it's also possible to do that with Conda, with, with uh, Python apps, but I didn't really uh, don't find uh, these uh, substantial differences between the two options. Uh, it looks pretty similar to me, but I, I know that uh, people is like, uh, in some way, preferring the condoms. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that also these are like a really intuitive to configure it in some way. Yeah, it does seem simpler, and also add like, I, well, I thought 
Python in uh, virtual environments. It didn't allow you to specify different versions of Python. But even even then, like Conda is sort of more general, where like maybe it was it was built for Python, but there's all sorts of other software tools you can install with Conda that don't have to do with Python at all. Um, oh. And uh, okay, so, um, yeah, it's because I like uh, thinking of oh, like. What would be the best option to Yeah, do? in a lot of cases, there's like several ways to do the same thing. But I think Conda is the, the most general I've found that works usually pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you might have explained it, but this mode A. Oh, um, I did not explain. I, I didn't explain it very well, I don't think. So, um, with this execute command, you can say, uh, this argument just says like, do you want to run the command when you're loading the module or when you're unloading the module? Those are the two. Oh, okay. The only two options that it allows. Thank you. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. And actually another little detail is that the load command um, will actually unload when you do unload, if that makes sense. <laughs> I said that really confusingly, but um, basically it, it's smart about running the commands the reverse order. So um, when you load the module, it'll run load conda. Uh, when you unload the module, it'll unload this as well. Um, yeah. And in the reverse order, I think, so that it, uh, basically it, would, it does what you expect it to do. Um, but, Oh, it's finally done. Um, so when you want to share this with uh, the people that is working with you, mm -hmm. uh, what files are you giving them to to load and make all these processes here? Yeah, I would say, um, so in this case, we put in the shared software, we actually put the software where we installed it. And then in the Lua files, we've made the, the things for LMOD. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, Set the permissions for both of those so that people can access those. Mm -hmm. um, don't put them in your home folder like a <laughs> it's a bad not what you do if you want to share. Um, so those two things, and then the module use command um, and the bash rc, and that should mm -hmm. pointing to the Lua file specifically, and that should cover everything. Yeah, that's all I had for today. Uh, so we'll see everyone uh, next week for the next low. Yeah, great. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Apple. All right. See you guys. See you. See you.